Ready? Okay. April 1st, uh, joke. Um, okay, we are semi meeting. Uh, the agenda, should I read the agenda or how, how do I do it? I'd just say it's April 1st, 2020, and this is the SMI community call. And we okay. are moderated today by um, Stefan. Please introduce yourself and uh, get us started. So I'm, I'm Stefan Prodan. I work for WeWorks uh, and I'm an SMI spec maintainer. Uh, on the agenda today, we have the talk about celebrate the CNC of membership. Um, talk about the versioning of the API, how we want to do that uh, to move forward. And yeah, we have a couple of more issues, a lot of issues actually here. Governance um, and the project board, I think it's, uh, it's also a good topic to have. Uh, Amy, you want to go first on the CNCF membership and what that implies? Welcome, you're here. You're a sandbox project. It's good to see all of you. Hooray. We've got a bunch so of other a writers sandbox here. project, we don't get much, right? Uh, part of that actually means that you have a neutral space to be able to grow in towards being whatever it is that you want to here. We're here to help. Um, we're here to be able to make sure that you get what you need to be able to be successful in this. Um, and I know there's a lot of other questions around like logistics and pieces further down, but we can get to those in the agenda. But welcome. Good to see you all. Thank you. Do you want to talk about the versioning uh, thing, Bridget? Ah, uh, yes. I noticed, um, Stefan, that you commented on that. And I know that it's a ticket that Michelle had opened um, in the spec repo, issue 88. And it says, you know, that you mentioned consolidation of API resources under the same version, blah, blah, blah. And I just wanted to bring it up in terms of if we wanted the specification to have information about previous release versions, we should probably make a chart or something. I'm not sure, I mean, we're not gonna solve it on this call, but it's, since you put that comment, I'm wondering if you wanted to kind of say more about what you think the next step is. Yeah, I think there are, we have two approaches to this. I think we should at least now in the alpha stage, we should list all the, API versions that we currently have. And I think it's also important to specify what implementation works with what version. For example, um, I don't know, Linkerd is on alpha one, maybe others are on, on other versions. And I think it's uh, for someone that wants to integrate, let's say through SMI with, uh, with a service mesh or other operators, um, you can't really tell right now what works with what and what version works with what other version because we also have dependencies between uh, the API objects. Um, one proposal was to list all the, all the versions, uh, consolidate them under alpha four or something like that. And every time we make a change, we bump the, the version on all of them. Um, in that way, people don't have to worry. Hey, I have, um, I don't know, HTTP routes alpha two. Does it work with a, a traffic split uh, alpha two or alpha three? The answer is alpha three, and so on. So, um, in terms of representing that in the in the repository, there are two, two propositions. One will be to create directories for each version and copy the specifications and everything in there. Uh, and another approach that I suggested would be to create branches for each version. Um, there are when you, when you say create to, branches, do you mean branches in GitHub? Yes. And branches so there'd be like GitHub. all these long lived branches that would diverge from each other. I have many concerns about that <laughs> because long lived branches. Is there a way we could have like, you know, a compatibility matrix that we maintain either on the web page or in a markdown file in GitHub? that people could look at at a glance and see this is the current compatibility. I just worry that if we have a whole bunch of branches, so, people will still need a chart. <laughs> They'll need a guide. I, I only have one ask and that is a kind of weird sounding ask and that is the, the negative example. Uh, 
I don't want to say that this is like a bad practice, but if I look at client go, I always, although I wrote a book about it, I always get confused trying to figure out what the heck should I be using? I'm sorry, but so if we can keep it as simple as possible, do it once properly and keep the matrix as small as possible to not confuse people, that would be awesome. That's my only worry. So I, I think we can totally avoid the, the metrics, the compatibility metrics, if we bump the version on each modification. Now, if we, if we are going to do 100 changes to the API in the following month, we'll have V1 alpha 100. Um, are we going to do so many modifications? Are we, I don't think SMI will have so many things uh, inside uh, and maybe bumping the version every time it's, it's the right solution. What if we do what um, I think is really effective in the Kubernetes project, which is we define what a regular release would look like and we, we make commitments to the release. And if the releases are, because the pace of change is not so rapid, you've always got the option of kind of being ahead of the release if you want. But, but I think if we can make an, a com commitment and an agreement that we, we will always try to be on the release, and let's say we do every two months on a release, maybe, maybe that's the way or our way. So this is a specification, not a software. We cannot commit to a release every two months if you don't change the spec. I don't think yes. the software release pattern applies to specification at all. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I don't think you have to do a release, but, but I think um, there's definitely, I mean, if we kind of backtrack, there's, there's definitely been, there are definitely changes which are happening. All I'm kind of really suggesting is that we, we bundle changes into a, you know, we don't release before or something. So right. we have no release of the SMI spec as it is. Hmm. But I, yeah. I guess what, what Nick was, was alluding to was more or less this kind of, you know, breaking, breaking or not, right? Where you say up to this level, we reserve the right to change something. So, you know, if you want to use it, feel free to, but we do not make any guarantees that you will see it in this phase up to better or whatever. And once it's GA, we kind of commit and say, we do not change the API anymore. And if we then do something changing, it would definitely get a new API, like major two or whatever. I think that's, at least that was how I interpreted Nick. Um, so I'm going to say quick time check since we're going to try a condensed version of this meeting. We're trying that today and we'll see how that goes. But since we've allocated a third of our time so far and we've talked about this item, um, I'm going to point people to the issue because I think that there's a lot of detail we could dive into here. So people who have opinions about this, that's the issue to go and hopefully by the next meeting, everyone will have put their comments on the issue. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Because we have a lot of things on the agenda. <laughs> Should we talk about the governance documentation? So we have a, government, a governance doc right now that states that um, um, maintainer will be removed after three months if he's not active. Um, I don't know what active means. Um, I'm guessing it's not only about writing some new spec, it's also about um, responding on issues um, and all this stuff. So do you want to discuss that? Also adding, removing projects. That's, we, yeah, we don't have, we don't have nothing around it in the governance. Do we have a, a mechanism also to voluntarily do that? I have seen that yeah. for, for the ambassador program where you can essentially say like, yeah, you know, I've, I've changed focus or whatever. So I, you know, I'm not gonna wait for these three months. I just declare I, I'm out of here. So yeah, maintainers must remain active if they are unresponsive for more than three months, they are automatically removed, okay? A maintainer may step down by submitting an issue starting their intent. Okay. Yeah, I think the only thing in there, Stefan, is maybe what active means. 
And specific with the cleanup I did, I did actually reach out to everybody and they specifically said, I guess I could have had them comment on an issue. I reached them via Slack, but I did ask Suraj, um, you know, are you willing? And he said, no, please put me in emeritus. So, but yeah, I mean, we could say what, de what defines active? Have you been to a meeting? Have you contributed? Have you opened an issue? We could, we could just say, what does active mean? Is that really the crux of what we need to define here? I don't want to make things too complicated, but I think we should take it a step further and say, hey, this is what document specifically what a maintainer's responsibilities are. And then the definition of active will be more clear in that, you know, they have not um, been doing their duties for X amount of time. And member responsibilities might be helping with issue triage, attending meetings, resolving issues, submitting pull right. requests. Let me, let me just go look for prior art in the CNCF. I'm sure somebody's documented this and I'll put an issue together. And if the verbiage looks similar to what we agree on, then we can just bring it over. I guess we, that, that sounds like a great idea, uh, Lucky. But I, I really want to make sure that we don't have too much process on the one hand. On the other hand, like it's a bit like a prenup, right? You, you, as long as everything is good, you don't need it, right? you exactly need it if if something goes sideways right and then it's like you know what if like you know i've been i don't know on the road or family business whatever i i still want to but do i just after three months immediately get kicked out or do i have a, a way to appeal and like you know we if we do it properly you know listing all the responsibilities then you know what does it mean after two months you get a warning you have a chance to you know pick it up again or like how, how does it actually play out all the way through otherwise it's like we just defer to the first time where it happens and making up these rules when it happens is almost never a good idea, in my experience. Okay, so it sounds like we're putting together an issue and people can take a look at that. Okay, let's move, move forward. Um, about the renaming of the SMI adapter for Istio, do you want to rename it into Istio operator or what was uh, a second? Yeah, I put that one on the agenda because it was kind of an so old issue, but since we were in the middle of or rearranging all the GitHub repos, I was like, interesting, Does do we need to do this? I think, Michelle, you were in that mix. I'm not you super any passionate about renaming it anyway anymore. I think adapt the term adapter is used in the Istio community, and so that's why it was named adapter, and that's fine. Let's, I okay. don't really care to run that said script right now, but um, <laughs> is anybody else passionate about it? I really like the adapter naming, okay. it makes sense. It's also in the SMI readme uh, right now, the main readme where we list the environments. We say, hey, uh, Istio think it's an adapter and uh, console, the console connect thing, it's also on a, through an adapter. Can what we the close the contenders issue? for name? Were there any other suggestions? I don't have the issue up. Operator. It's fine. All right. I would be fine with word. <laughs> yeah. My vote is governor. It's your governor. We're gonna confuse everyone. <laughs> I can't. Naming is so hard. Do we have any representatives from Istio in SMI on the spec yet? Not that I know of. Not then we could totally troll them. We can call it the the, the Istio. Mixer. If somebody, by the way, if somebody oh. knows off topic, but if somebody knows the right person on Istio to reach out to, to find out if they want their logo, that's uh, them and console connect actually are <laughs> looking at you, Nick, are the ones that I have not signed off. Know. You didn't sign off on the issue. <laughs> you were like, took care of it. And I look at the issue and I'm like, GitHub doesn't agree. <laughs> so I'll drop right. a link in the chat, but yeah. So like, we don't want to use anyone's logo if they haven't said we can use it. So Istio, because members of this community wrote the adapter. By the way, if you are interested in working on the Istio adapter, please do, because I've noticed in trying to get pull requests through there that we have a minimal amount of maintainers who focus in that particular repo. I might get yeah. fired if I did that. Michelle? <laughs> yeah, I haven't really been super active on it lately, but I am, but it's just, uh, I'm trying to update the metrics piece of it, so not the adapter. 
I having an issue with contributing to this uh, adapter since it's using the it's uh, the it's using the OpenShift SDK, right? Uh, it's using what? Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, the operator the SDK. Oh. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, why specifically? I don't know. Is it I just because it's, it's hard? Uh, it's over complicating everything. Like. Okay. Um, yeah, it needs a lot of updates, right? It doesn't use Go modules. Um, yeah. So, yeah. You, do you want to like throw up any issues, Stefan? I would be happy to take a look at them. I'm gonna have some more time for that. Yeah, I think the what what it does is fairly simple. So, Cube Builder should work just fine without using all these frameworks. I think it's an overkill and complicates makes the, the contribution harder. I think that's valid feedback and we should look into it. I think I inherited decisions and didn't really, I had like a lot of things to focus on, so I didn't really make those changes, but that's valid feedback. Yeah, I think when, when we build this, it was, Cube Builder wasn't where it is today, and now it's like the de, de facto way of building operators and it should be fairly easy to migrate. Uh, I don't know if we still use the project board or if we discussed that, but I think making it um, making a priority for the ISI adapter to be easier to contribute to is uh, something I'd like to prioritize for you do. Yeah, I'm, so, anything that was not finished, I did move um, with the exception of a couple of things that I was thinking we'd be able to wrap up. But anyway, Stefan, go ahead. So do we want to archive the old Slack? I guess so. Do, do we have yes. some kind of need to like, do we have some kind of need to keep the data from it? I, I don't really know what, N Nick, you have ideas? Oh, you're waving because you're heading out. Okay. Yeah, I was apologizing. I, I just got to bounce. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm not, it's not clear to me if anyone has anything in the old Slack that they really, really want, but I feel like we should pick a time that we're going to either archive or delete and then let people, you know, decide to do what they want to do. Does anyone have any strong feelings about that was why I brought it up. No, none here. Okay. My preference would be sooner rather than later. The only thing I want to keep is my statistics so that everyone knows I'm the most talkative person on earth, but I can't keep those forward to the CNCF one, unfortunately. I'm for delete deleting it altogether. Well, okay. So we'll probably do that in like the next month. We already set the general channel to read only, so. But I've just noticed there's like 395 people in that Slack. I guess some of them are already in the CNCF Slack, but they aren't in our channel. So maybe go out and reach out to the people you think want to be in our channel. Uh, next and the last thing, talk about the project board. Uh, yes. So basically anything that's on the Q1 project board still, if you want to go click on and write things on it if you care about those. Um, otherwise, I'm going to try to get those ones resolved or moved. And if you think things should be on the project board for Q2, we haven't put a ton of formality into what goes on a project board versus just the, the main thing that I did was I moved all the stuff from the um, SMI spec project board. Now that we have an organization, we can have an organization wide project board and you can add um, cards from any uh, of the repos. So that is like open to people's ideas of how they want to organize it. Um, I don't really want to be heavy handed with it. I just want to make sure that anything that we care about, we are moving forward on. So maybe that's a discussion topic, you know, what we want to move forward on specifically, like in Q2 could be a discussion topic for the next meeting. If people want, everybody wants to take as a homework assignment from this meeting, go think about what you have open that you care about. Um, we did skip, by the way, there were a bunch of open pull requests and we did skip the discussion of it. And I don't think that person showed up to this meeting. 
but if they did, and they are just under a different name, um, the pull request to add support for routes is actually something that I was not positive. I saw that, um, Stefan, maybe you can address that because you did the most review of that code, but is that something that changes the spec significantly to the point where, because it looked like he was adding some things. Anyway, yeah, maybe if you want to address that, Stefan. Um, yeah, I was waiting for Thomas' uh, feedback on, on that pull request. Um, but there's pull requests from that guy on this topic on almost every repo. Like, it looks like he's really trying to dive in and get this specific thing done. And so I was like, hmm, someone should care. Yeah, it's a, it's a push from Linkerd to consolidate uh, the metrics under SMI, right, Thomas? Yeah, uh, to give a background, um, we're trying to get everything in Linkerd multi-tenant. SMI metrics would give us all of the read multi-tenancy, so you can just have Kubernetes RBAC, uh, but a lot of it was missing, and so Alex has been working at updating the spec to support all of the existing Linkerd functionality. Routes is the biggest change there. Um, there's not anything necessarily uh, changing to the spec, it's mostly just additive but uh, it's definitely something that we should be comfortable about moving forward on. Does this, is this gonna involve more documentation updates too then, or what's your approach there? Uh, it definitely needs, I think some of the, one of the things that's come out of this is Alex has been frustrated in trying to figure out where to add things. He's approaching it a bit from an engineering perspective. And so most of the PRs and information has gone into the spec. And so I think an outstanding piece is updating the documentation inside the spec repo to go and give a feel for what use cases this is and what the responses are and how what we actually intend from a support perspective. Um, I don't think it should block anything, but it's definitely provides a discussion point, which is, I think we should have a document written up that explains the checklist for how to propose a change to the SMI spec itself and what we expect to get out of it. Yeah, so, so the metrics changes got proposed in the SDK as a client Go implementation, a Go Lang implementation for SMI. And afterwards we try to push Alex and say, hey, sh this should be, documenting a spec for us, then implementing the SDK. Um, and he's trying to do that right now. I reviewed uh, the changes in the SDK and also the changes to the spec. Uh, in the current state, uh, the pull request looks good to me. I've approved it, but we need another uh, look at it for someone else. And that's it, we should move forward. There were a couple of things like the version wasn't bumped everywhere. It was only in the header. The examples were, were on the old version. And yeah, I, I missed some of those. I realized later, I asked Alex, hey, please make all the changes like it should. And then Alex realized, okay, but we also need the old version. And this is how we got to the versioning discussion. Like uh, I, I managed to add all the old versions in the SDK. So now whoever uh, uses the SDK can use uh, older versions as well. So it's easier to upgrade inside your own implementation from one version to another. Uh, but we also need uh, the same approach in, in the spec because you look at the SDK, okay, this is V1 alpha one. What does this mean? You look at the spec and you don't see it anymore. So you have to look in the Git history. So that's why I proposed either a branch or let's make directories in there, but we should have everything until, I don't know, beta one or something like that when we can archive the alpha versions. Okay, so. so yeah, if you want to look over the pull request. Uh, and so it sounds like Stefan and Thomas have the most context on this. So if you two want to look through all of the pull requests that this gentleman has put in and kind of help guide those through. Yep. Uh, what else? Do you have anything else? 
No. Uh, we maybe. did have, I did have an item in there about the meeting length. All right, we've now tried a condensed meeting. Do people prefer the hour long meeting or do they feel like we hit enough of the high points for discussion interactively in this one? Anyone have strong feelings one way or the other? I like the half an hour a lot. Yeah. We could discuss about versioning for hours. So. <laughs> On GitHub, please. That's, that will give yeah, many that's, people that's benefit from it. That it should be on GitHub, yes. Well, just because if it's that important, it would be great for everyone to get a chance to read what you what you said. <laughs> yeah, I, I added my my feedback in, in GitHub, but there are like three issues now on versioning, and we should make sure we link them together so we don't lose one one side of the story or the other. Right, we have Michael H. moderating next time. We need a volunteer to be short. Um, yes, shorter meeting is wonderful. Volunteer to be quick on the typing uh, and the interpretation and the guidance next time. Do we have a do we have a taker for that for the notes? I'm very bad at typing, but I'll do it if no one. No one else. Uh, um, Michelle beat you to it by yeah. 10 seconds, Stefan. You want to arm wrestle. <laughs> or Stefan can be assistant to the note taker, which is the, the honorary <laughs> title that we had last time. <laughs> All right, we're doing wonderfully on time. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> no problem, Stefan. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Stefan, you want to? up. All right. Thank you. See everyone next Bye. time, April 15th. Bye.